Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Interactive forms are a great way to collect data from visitors to your website. Visitors simply enter data, select options, or choose answers from form fields, and then click a submit button to send the information to you. The data submitted is then organized into a list of field names and field values by a form handler. A form handler is a script or tiny program that resides on your website's server. The program receives the data and processes it in some way. The results may then be saved to another web page, a text file, a database, or sent to someone via email. There are a few ways in which you can create a form. You can use one of the templates available, use the form wizard, or build your own form from scratch using individual form fields. Let's first take a look at using the form wizard. You can access the form wizard the same way you can access your other page templates. The form page wizard is located on the general tab. The first screen of the form page wizard gives you information and basically tells you how you'll be guided through the process of creating this form. Once you've read the information here, click Next. Now you'll need to add the different questions or sections of the form. To do this, click Add. You'll only add one question or section of the form at a time. So, for this example, let's start with contact information. After you select a question or type of information from the list at the top of this screen, you can change the prompt for the question in the field at the bottom if you need to. If you don't need to, simply click Next. Depending on the type of information you selected to gather in the previous step, this screen will offer various types of information together, called items. There are several items for each of the different input types, some of which may not be necessary for the form you're creating. Here, simply select the items that you would like the form to collect for the input type that you have selected. So, for example, let's say all I need for my form is the name, the work phone, the email address, and the website address. If you'd like, you can change the base name for the group of items, but the default base names are rather intuitive and descriptive. You generally won't need to change this. Once you're done on this screen, click Next. This will bring you back to the screen where you can add more questions or sections. If you need to add more, simply click the Add button again, and then repeat the process that you just completed, selecting a different question or information type. Notice how the input type options are different for personal information than they were for contact information. When you're done adding all the questions or sections of the form, click Next on this screen. The next screen of the wizard will present you with some options for the presentation of the form. First off, you can select how each question or input type should be presented, either as normal paragraphs, as a numbered list, as a bulleted list, or as a definition list. Then, if you have a very long form, you can select to add a table of contents for the page. However, in this example, our form will be quite short, so a table of contents is not necessary. You can also select to align the form fields in a table. Selecting this option will help you to easily align, arrange, and move the form in your page. The table will be invisible in the final online version of the page by default, 
but you can use the concepts that you learned in the lesson on tables earlier in the tutorial to customize them however you'd like. When you're finished selecting options here, click Next. Next, you can select the output options for the form. These output options define how the data from the form is compiled and sent to you. Simply select the type of output that you want the results to be saved to and enter a base name for the file. Your options are to save results to a web page, save results to a text file, or use a custom CGI script. If you choose the Use a Custom CGI Script option, you must have a working knowledge of CGI scripts and how to create them, as you must generally create them on your own. However, some web hosting providers have pre-built CGI scripts available to their customers, so you may want to check with your provider to see whether or not these are available to you. You may have noticed that there is not an option here to send the results to you or someone else via email. This setting must be applied in a different area, which we'll discuss later in the lesson. Also, the default name, form result, is a name that will work just fine. It's not necessary to change this unless you want a different name. When you're finished selecting your options here, click Next. The last page of the wizard will simply tell you that you've finished the process and when you're ready to create the form, click Finish. The form will then be created as a new page. You can change the labels in the form page if you'd like, as they're simple labels by default. The labels for the form fields are italicized so that you can find them easily in the page. To change any label, simply select the text, and then enter new text. You will also need to replace the title of the page, the short explanation, and the author and copyright information at the bottom of the page if it's not automatically filled in for you by front page. You can also change the formatting of this page or apply a custom style sheet if you already have one created. As always, be sure to save your file when you're finished. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.